Most of the oceans on our planets are like the Wild West when it comes to conservation, open to exploitation. The high seas cover three-fifths of the world and they're home to an extraordinary display of life. From the ocean giants that migrate around the planet and sequester CO2 when they die, to the ocean drifters, or plankton, which produce half the oxygen we breathe. We know more about the surface of Mars than the ocean depths, as I learned when I accompanied a Greenpeace expedition to chart an unexplored deep sea reef in the Atlantic of South America. Diving teams went to the limits of human endurance and discovered extraordinary biodiversity. Samples were sent up to the surface and we hauled them on board to be assessed. There was all manner of life, like mollusks, crustaceans, sponges and starfish. And are you finding uh, species that you don't recognise as well? Oh, plenty. Plenty, because this is all deep sea stuff, so very, very few people know them. Very, very. It's very rare. Kilometres below the surface lie hydrothermal vents, areas rich in minerals, useful for batteries in this developing age of renewable energy. These ecosystems also contain genetic resources with the potential, particularly for medical applications, all of great interest to mining companies. But there are fears of what could happen without regulation. We're only just starting to, to peer into those murky depths and understand what is there. You know, our ability to, to impact on a system far away <laughs> outstrips currently our, our, our evidence or knowledge of, of what exists there. It seems to me to be prudent and, and precautionary to make sure that we don't destroy things before we fully had a chance to, to, to understand them, to explore them, to study them. A treaty would govern human activity on and under the high seas and stop a free-for-all like unsustainable fishing practices regulating how much and from where precious resources can be taken. Nick Clark, Al Jazeera. Laura Meller is the Oceans campaigner at Greenpeace and joins us now from New York. Good to have you with us on the programme, Miss Meller. Um, who owns what and where uh, seems to be the main sticking point at the moment. Well, I think um, the very question of who owns the high seas is a, a question at the moment. Um, the Global Ocean Treaty is our lifetime's biggest opportunity to put conservation and equity at the heart of how we look after our oceans um, after decades of mismanagement and exploitation. And right now, um, governments have the opportunity to secure uh, rules for effectively deciding on where uh, protected areas can be created and how they are managed um, and one of the one of the key issues on the table right now is uh, on marine genetic resources, the building blocks of life um, that scientists scientific discoveries can potentially unlock big profits uh, from in the future. But it's also and can I just jump in there? Can I just jump in there, Miss Meller? Because obviously it's also yes. a conversation, isn't it, between countries at the moment about those countries that have the resources to scour the seabed and those that don't, and how there is, you might say, a fair division of um, what they discover in the future and how they all benefit from that discovery. Exactly. Uh, that's uh, one, one side of the, the question is um, how, how, these, uh, how the benefits are shared in a fair and equitable way. Uh, and the other side of it is how can everybody have access to generating the knowledge about the oceans uh, that can help solve their problems? I mean, you, you've obviously spoken, and Greenpeace has, to uh, countries in the, in the rich northern hemisphere and also, you might say, in the poorer southern hemisphere. Um, there is that divide again, isn't there? And we're hearing various arguments. We, we, arguments is perhaps too strong a word, but debate amongst the rich... Uh, north and the, the poorer south as to uh, who actually benefits from this. Th those arguments are being raised, are they not? Yes, and the... I believe from the Global South perspective, the key, um, key issue is um, equity and 
what providing access tra transparency and um and sharing the benefits sure. from the scientific discoveries but also more broadly uh, what's what would you like to see come out of this agreement what does greenpeace want to see out of this agreement that would benefit everybody well this is um this global ocean treaty needs to be a tool that can create a network of ocean sanctuaries across the blue planet as it was just two months ago that all governments agreed to protecting um, at least 30% of the oceans by 2030. Uh, that's a target that scientists say is the bare minimum to allow marine life a chance to heal. Um, and currently, this is not possible um, for the majority of the world's oceans because they don't have the legal tools. Uh, so this Global Ocean Treaty um, is the tool to create the create protection uh time is running out on the 30 by 30 target and that's why it's so critical that the treaty is agreed here and now well, we shall see what does happen certainly in the coming hours maybe the coming days for the moment uh, laura mella thanks for joining us from new york thank you